So with, with that, let me introduce uh, Mike Rowe. I introduced him uh, in my opening statement, Mr. Rowe. Uh, Mr. Rowe, you're, welcome. you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Appreciate it very much. I'm going to push my button now. But it's red. Does this mean I have to stop? OK. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. When I was 17, my high school guidance counselor tried to talk me into a four-year degree. I had nothing against college. In fact, I aspired to it. But the universities that Mr. Dunbar recommended were expensive, and I had no idea what I wanted to study. So I told him I thought a two-year school made more sense for me. But Mr. Dunbar said anything less than a four-year degree would be beneath my potential. Those were his exact words, beneath my potential. He then turned to a poster that was hanging on the wall behind his desk. And I brought some visual aids. I hope that's OK. But that's, that's the exact poster. And he said, uh, well, it's clear. I mean, on one side, you can see we've got a college graduate standing proudly in his cap and gown, eyes fixed optimistically on the horizon. And on the other side, we have a, a beaten down, depressed looking blue collar worker staring woefully at, at nothing in particular. And underneath, the, the caption spells it out. Work smart, not hard. Mr. Dunbar pointed to that poster and he said, Mike, I want you to look at these two guys and tell me, which one do you want to be? So that poster was part of a PR campaign for college. And back when I was in high school, they were hanging all over the place. The message, crystal clear, get a degree and enjoy a life of limitless opportunity. Otherwise, get ready for a life of drudgery and hard work. And as far as I can tell, that was the first time an adult ever warned me about the, the perils of, of hard work. Did the campaign work? Undeniably, over the next 30 years, university enrollment soared. Financial aid became readily available. Millions of students opted to pursue a four-year degree. That's great. Unfortunately, as higher education flourished, the alternatives floundered. Shop classes vanished from high schools. Apprenticeship programs fell by the wayside. Trade schools started to struggle. Entire categories of critical jobs began to fall out of favor. A skills gap began to emerge, and companies who relied on a trained workforce began to struggle for the first time with technical recruitment. So those were the unintended consequences of promoting one form of education at the expense of all the alternatives. And those consequences have worsened. Since I graduated from Essex Community College back in 1982, the cost of a college degree has increased nearly 600 percent. Student loans have eclipsed a trillion dollars. And the majority of today's graduates are working in jobs that don't even require a four-year degree. And of course, the skills gap is wider than ever. Hundreds of thousands of good jobs remain unfilled, even as millions of Americans are looking for work. And still, we lend money we don't have to kids who can't pay it back so they can buy expensive four-year degrees and pursue jobs that don't exist anymore. That's the legacy of a society that embraces a cliché. Look again at the images on Mr. Dunbar's poster. Mechanics are still thought of as grease monkeys. In truth, they're more like rocket science today, anyhow. Many of them get paid just like it. Likewise, a, a good welder, as we heard, can make 150 grand a year. Some do a lot better than that. Not a month goes by. I don't talk to my friends at Caterpillar. They're desperate, literally desperate, for people to work on heavy equipment, as you guys well know. The question is, why is there a skills gap at a time of such unemployment? Why aren't parents encouraging their kids to pursue these type of jobs? And the answer is right there on the poster. Mm -hmm. Those portrayals are powerful. And over time, they've had a real impact. The skilled trades, once held in high esteem, are now seen as some sort of vocational consolation prize. That's why so many trade schools and so many companies are fighting day to day with technical recruitment. It's not just a skill gap, it's a will gap fueled by a perception problem. And that's why I'm here today. Since 2008, the MicroWorks Foundation has tried to challenge the stigmas and stereotypes that keep millions of people from pursuing a whole list of great careers. For starters, I revised this stupid poster into something a little bit saner, and that's the alternative. As you can see, it now reads, work smart and hard. It's a simple little distinction 
but I think it matters. I also replaced the images with something a bit more in keeping with the current job market. As you can see, I've assumed the role of the graduate, uh, recently matriculated, educated, in debt, and uh, unfortunately not trained for the opportunities that really exist. Next to me, a far more aspirational representation of some of the jobs available today. Technical, debt-free, plugged in. You can see the difference. Modesty aside, I really think this sentiment should be hanging in high schools all across the country, ideally in the office of every guidance counselor. Unfortunately, propaganda and posters alone aren't going to close the skills gap. Changing perceptions on a national level is a bit beyond the reach of my own modest efforts or those of, of MicroWorks, but it can be done. Remember, keep America beautiful. The campaign with the Indian weeping on the side of the highway. That campaign worked. It actually changed behavior. It took time, but it worked. It was started in 1953 by a consortium of American businesses, nonprofit organizations, government agencies, and concerned in individuals. I I'm the concerned individual. MicroWorks is a nonprofit, and you guys are the government. From what I'm told, the Rolodex here is enormous. Help connect me with companies and corporations that care about the issue. They've got skin in the game. We all do. It'd be great to reach parents and kids and the Mr. Dunbars of today. They're still out there. Their message needs to be challenged head on. The goal of Keep America Beautiful was simple. Change the perceptions by bringing the public and private sectors together to promote a national ethic of cleanliness. I think it's time to do the same thing for a national ethic of work. It's time to make a case for the jobs that actually exist and take that case to the country. If we can change the way people feel about littering, we ought to be able to change the way people feel about skilled labor on a fundamental level. I really think we have to because this is bigger than keeping America beautiful. Closing the skills gap is about keeping America working. Really, it's about keeping America, America.